What if I told you the Empire had ships larger than Super Star Destroyers, and not only did they have them, but they were routinely used and were vital in keeping the Empire and her navies afloat, sort of literally. We'll cover that and more in today's Star Wars video. Hey guys, this is Justin. I'm very happy to see you. Welcome to another video. Today we'll be covering a massive Imperial ship, the Field Secured Container Vessel. Before we continue, I do just want to note that for the thumbnail and in this video, I've sometimes used images by the incredible artist and friend of the channel, Fractal Sponge. I've linked to his art down below. Make sure you check it out. All right, so have you ever noticed that Star Wars doesn't spend a whole lot of time covering logistics? How does the Empire move everything across the galaxy? If they need grain, or fuel or something not being carried by a smuggler type like Han Solo, what do they rely on? Star Wars Rebels admittedly sometimes scratched this itch, giving us a look at Imperial logistics, but usually on a fairly small scale. Unsurprisingly, all of these issues were well considered in early Star Wars source books. The field secured container vessel, which I'll be calling the FSCV, was introduced to Star Wars fans way back in 1989 in the quite excellent Imperial source book. The vessel type was even more prominently covered in a further RPG supplement, which I'll get into in just a second. Either way, the Imperial source book discusses Imperial support fleets. Support fleets were made up of 500 ships, a quarter of which, according to the source book, were Corvette class or smaller. However, a quarter of them were the huge Lornor FSCVs. What were these ships? Well, it's actually somewhat complicated. What I'm going to call a field-secured containment vessel was actually a pair of ships, a pair of FSCVs. Imagine a train with an engine on each end. In between the two engines would be the cargo. This is what the source book says. FSCVs always traveled in pairs, their main ion engines facing in opposite direction. In between the ion engines were massive force field bubbles which were used to transit material. These bubbles were each 800 meters in diameter. That's absolutely massive, and FSCVs could commonly chain together over 20 of these bubbles. The main limitation on the size of the craft seemed to be the power consumption. The bubbles had to be generated, so there is sort of a max of bubble chained compartments, but given the fact that 20 was not uncommon, that also seems to imply that in certain rare situations, you'd see FSCVs with probably more compartments and maybe reaching 25 or more kilometers, and for comparison's sake, a Super Star Destroyer comes in at 19. Each bubble would contain over 250 million cubic meters of cargo space. As a comparison, the largest cargo ship we have in the real world has a cargo capacity of about 21,000 TEUs. That's under a million cubic meters, and that's just one bubble on one ship or one pair of ships in a much larger support fleet. The individual bubbles were generated by Prexton field generators. The Imperial Sourcebook notes that the Prextons were so energy hungry that the ion engines were very underpowered. Like a train, the FSCV took a lot of time to accelerate to its full speed or slow down completely, with a full throttled ship taking about 35 hours or 600 million kilometers to reach a standstill. For that reason, the ships usually just continued to move even when unloading cargo. They would essentially fly on a path near a depot or a planet, and smaller ships would either load or unload the necessary cargo. So that part's not like a train, sort of more like a train robbery. The FSCV would actually slow down, but by less than a third of its total velocity. So a very interesting ship. I alluded to another source book earlier, and that gives us details into a specific FSCV known as the Black Ice. The Black Ice was made by Rendilli Star Drive, indicating that there were at least two models of the cargo transports as the Imperial source book stated that FSCVs were created by Lornar Corp. The Black Ice seemed specifically to be created to transport fuel, and it actually had enough of it in its cargo to keep an Imperial fleet operational for over a year. The Rebels obviously don't want that to happen. If possible, they want to steal the fuel for themselves, so the source 
first book gives a lot more details about the interior of the ship, anything that a DM would want to know when making an adventure about a plot to capture or destroy one. For one, the Rendilli model of the FSCV was slightly smaller, probably because they wanted the shielding around the fuel containers to be a little more sturdy. The balls were instead 600 meters in diameter, and there were only nine of them. Unsurprisingly, you don't actually need a huge crew for an FSCV. Most of the space is taken up by the cargo. There is a conduit that runs down the ship, which carries the power. But overall, you have hundreds of people, not thousands or tens of thousands, in each side of the ship. The engines were very large, so the crew was usually stationed on a frigate-sized command capsule on top of the engines. Most of the maintenance requirements and other tasks were, of course, fulfilled by specialized droids. To my knowledge, we've never actually gotten a full breakdown of how long the engine pods are, but given the fact that we know the command capsule is 300 meters long, we get a good idea of the FSCVs itself being about Star Destroyer size, to be honest. The campaign ends with the Rebels ramming the Black Ice into a torpedo sphere, which was moving into position to bomb the Rebel base on the planet Fangal. I checked Wikipedia because I wasn't sure, and apparently the Black Ice itself has made its way into Star Wars canon. Just the fact that there was a large Imperial fuel ship, several times larger than an ISD, which was destroyed in a collision. So that's pretty cool, but let me know, does this sort of scratch the same itch it does for you in fleshing out the universe and how the sort of less sexy fighting side of the Empire actually worked? I love the idea of these super massive vessels in Star Wars, we do, of course, see smaller versions of the Imperial logistical chain, not only in Star Wars Rebels, but also in games like X-Wing Alliance. But overall, I thought this was really cool, and I'm glad I could share it to you. Is there anything else you'd like to see me cover down below? Is there another thing from the early era of the Star Wars EU which you think deserves its own video? Let me know down below. By the way, if you've gotten this far, a quick unrelated question. I've started a shorts channel, not YouTube shorts like the vertical ones, but just short videos all about Marvel, DC, other universes, and I'm trying to figure out a name. Should I call it Professor X, E-C-K-S, or X Basement? I'm personally leaning towards the latter, but it's hard to turn up a really good pun. Let me know. Okay, guys, be safe. Have a good one. May the force be with you.